Welcome everyone to Business Women Australia uh, webinar. And this, this month's topic is on achieving financial freedom with the fabulous Helen Nan. Uh, before I get into the topic with Helen, I'd just like to um, acknowledge the land in which we're all meeting. It's, uh, it's an amazing collective and we have women from all around Australia who come together um, online to join us at these things. And I'm sitting here in, in Bulu country. This is Perth, Western Australia. And i am like to pay my respects to the traditional owners, uh, the Wujak people of the Noongar Nation. Uh, this is a really special time, obviously leading into the referendum uh, for the yes uh, to voice. Uh, the voice is going to make a massive difference for Aboriginal people to be recognised in our constitution as the first Australians. Uh, if that is the only thing that it achieves from my point of view, and I've been very vocal about this, um, I would love to see that happen. We are the only country in the world with living Indigenous uh, people in our country that is not recognised in our constitution. So I think that we have some work to do in writing that wrong. Uh, if you're in two minds about where to vote and how to vote, um, I think it would be good for you to look at our last webinar that we had with Kyra Galanti. It was a real eye opener. I learned a lot. I know that a lot of our members and our supporters sat in on that amazing uh, webinar with her with some Q&A and we, we really tackled some tough aspects of, um, of even why Abor Aboriginal people were, it's, you know, some divided about it, but moving now towards really wanting that recognition. So it is a journey and what I thought about this morning as I was um, walking, uh, doing my walk with my puppy was, that the fact we're even talking about this is a great thing. So even, you know, good old Anthony Albanese actually raising this issue. So let's acknowledge the traditional people and the fact that they have um, been wise and wonderful in looking after this beautiful nation that we all call home. Um, I pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging, and I absolutely celebrate and support our Indigenous sisters in business. Uh, I'm Lynn Hawkins. I'm the founder and the national director of Business Women Australia. Welcome to our webinar. I'm not going to go through as much of this usual spiel that I do. We're going to uh, invite those of you who are considering membership or would like to stay on for a chat after Helen's session. And Leanne Jeffrey will go through what it is um, that Business Women is all about for those of you who are new and thinking about joining but it is a place where everyone's valued and it is a place where women share this desire and vision to bring about and contribute to the greater good. We're very collaborative, that's what we're all about. And we have this absolute mission to help each other achieve our goals and dreams and to really raise the voice and the profile and the influence and visibility of business women in Australia, the everyday women who are achieving so much incredible things and leaders in their own rights. So we're not just for business owners, but a big percentage of our members are business owners and entrepreneurs. Uh, we also have directors and uh, board chairs, executives, professionals, managers, consultants, coaches, uh, women in C-suite and uh, women who are studying business, you know, early on their journey, those emerging leaders coming through. So the magic, as I say, is in the mix. And we focus on these five areas. At this stage, we focus very much on leadership and what that means, leading ourselves and leading others, not seeing leadership as a title, but as a state of mind. Uh, we focus on business improvement and, of course, personal growth, influence and profile, connecting, and, of course, friendships. Um, we have so much coming up all around the nation, and we're really excited to uh, hear your views about what you want to see over the next 12 months. Uh, Leanne um, we, has organised a bit of a BWA think tank. Um, that think tank is coming up. Maybe, Leanne, if you can put the date and the um, and the and maybe the URL at some stage in the chat box for that think tank, that would be really great. We'd like to see members, um, all our members, be a part of that. If you're not a member, then now is a great time to join and be a part of our think tank. 
Uh, we've got the 19th of July in Sydney, Walk and Talk in the Domain. And if you miss, can't do July, then they're doing that again on the 16th of August. Um, in Bunbury, there's a networking lunch with Kathy Smith on the 21st of July. And then um, later on, uh, they'll be also doing a lunch, a, a Walk and Talk. Um, not a lunch. So the Bunbury is pretty busy. So on the 18th of August, they're doing a walk and talk. Uh, we've got Sydney Zen and Connect with Emma Gray. Uh, Emma is um, an, uh, is a clinical psychologist, but she's an executive coach and she's a leader in mindfulness. So uh, we thought that was such a great idea to do a Zen and Connect. So it's all around well-being. Um, no wine in that one. I would. I probably should be flying over to Sydney for that, so I can get my wine tasting with free drop. Eleventh uh, of August, we've got corporate responsibility. A webinar with the fabulous Dr. Kate Ringville, who's a leader in uh, circular economy and sustainability, and she's um, uh, set up a group over here called um, Galact. I think it's Galactic. Galactic. Co Galactic co cooperative. Um, uh, maybe again, Leanne, if you can chat in the um, Kate's bio there, it'd be really good for people to reach out and follow her. A lot of organisations, obviously, across the board, small and large, have to do climate risk and reporting. And that's going to be an important one for us all to be across, even if we're uh, a, a small business. So um, Perth Cheese and Chats, the wonderful Vita Carlino is hosting that on the 17th of August in, in, in Inglewood. Retrieving my true self is our topic for August. I love that topic. Vita always comes up with these crazy and wonderful topics, um, which really get us thinking. Um, and then on the 30th of August, Brisbane, Lucky Brisbane has the sumptuous wine splash um, in Lennon's restaurant at the Hyatt with Three Drops and Joanne Bradbury. Uh, they're always a night um, of absolute luxe and gourmet canapes that the chef at Lennon's is actually matching um, with the three drops wines with beautiful gourmet cheeses as well. So go along to that if you're in Brisbane. If you're thinking, why isn't there something happening in my area? Have a chat to Leanne and um, jump on board as a member and let's get something going on in your area. Um, Okay, so we wouldn't be able to do what we do without all our partners. Catco Enterprises look after so much of our digital um, presence, our website and many of our um, premium profiles, social media shout outs and all the wonderful things that they share on socials. Um, Hawkins Marketing and the strategic side of things we bring to the table for Business Women Australia. Intact Teams is the wonderful Jessica Schubert, who's our Head of Leadership Development, and she's also our partner for Disk Flow Accreditation. So those of you who are interested in getting accreditation in tools that help you understand and improve teams and working with teams, uh, have a look at our website for Disk Flow. Anne-Marie Cross, our podcasting queen, and of course now we have an, a second podcast uh, that Leanne Jeffries is managing. So premium level members have a chat to Leanne about those two podcast options. Uh, Three Drops, of course, is a wonderful wine uh, partner and inspiration source. So if you are interested in any of the courses that we offer uh, in partnership with our, our member organisations or if you're considering membership, if you've got ideas or questions, stay on at the end. Um, if you can't stay on, contact Leanne Jeffrey, Leanne at businesswomenaustralia.com.au. She's on this call um, and she would love to hear from you. So Helen Nan, my gosh, how I've known Helen now for quite a few years. And one of the things that struck me when I first met Helen is not only is she is super smart, um, She's uh, absolutely passionate about helping women achieve uh, and, and manage their wealth. And she's, she wrote a book uh, and, uh, your, called Your Best Life. And I think she's actually in the process of updating and releasing a new version of that. So um, she really has spent a lot of time thinking about how to engage particularly women, understand how to achieve um, ultimate freedom and financial security. So thanks for taking the time out to be here with uh, me and Helen. Um, I'd like you to maybe use your emoji button or pop into the chat box. Um, a sign, if you've already started your journey 
um, in achieving financial freedom. Just get an idea of a thumb up if you are or a thumb down. If, you, uh, if this is really why you're here, you really want to start this. Um, so of course, Helen, um, she is highly respected financial planner. She's also a media commentator around finance things. Um, and she's an author, as I just said, she's going to be providing some very practical tools and strategies and some insights around what is, what is going, you know, what's important for us to understand about when and how to achieve this financial freedom through understanding wealth and how to manage wealth. Um, I am not going to spend any much more time. Um, Helen, I've asked Helen to give us a bit of an insight about her, her background as well. So I'd just like to say congratulations for being here to all of you, for taking this time out of your busy days. You know, I, it's, it's a massive um, subject for me to try to get women to really uh, invest in their financial wealth building early. You know, I'm late in my career. I started very early in my 20s and it set up so many options and choices for us as a family. And I, have, I haven't seen a lot of other women doing this. Um, so well done for you for being here. I'll hand over now to the wonderful Helen Nan. And if you've got any questions as we go, pop them in the chat box uh, because we want this to be as interactive as possible. So um, towards the end of Helen's presentation, we'll just cover off on those questions and make sure we cover off for everybody. Over to you, Helen. Thank you very much for the introduction, Lynn, and you are welcome to the webinar. Lynn, can I share the screen? Today's presentation is all about how to achieve financial freedom. So ask yourself one question, what would you like to do tomorrow if you didn't need work for money? And what is stopping you from doing all these things? For most people, the answer is related to money. So my job as a financial advisor, I would like to help you unlock your potential and pursue your dreams and passion. So let's do an advice disclaimer because I'm a licensed advisor. So I need to uh, let, uh, let you understand the information presented today is general advice only. It doesn't really consider your personal circumstances. So in today's presentation, I'm going to teach you the practical strategies, how to build a million dollar portfolio using compound interest. So it, it is not really get this quick tip or overnight success strategy, but it is really practical approach and suitable for hardworking professionals and business owners who make up majority of Australian population. So today we're going to cover the framework of financial freedom. And I will show you how to calculate your freedom number and how to use a compound interest calculator. And then I'm going to explain the steps to achieve your financial freedom. So before we go to any technical side of financial freedom, I'd like to share my story as an investor at the beginning of my journey and why I do what I do. You might detect my accents. I wasn't born in Australia. I was born in China. And I didn't really learn good money management skills from my parents. My parents, are educated professionals, but the financial literacy wasn't part of their curricula. They struggled on the earning and spending trade mill, and they spent all their money on lifestyle and kids' education, and they never had any income producing assets. And they sent me to Australia to finish my studies and expected me to study hard, get a degree, learn a secure job. After I moved to Australia, I stayed with a homestay mom, Australian homestay mom. The good looking lady on the picture is my Aussie mom. At that time, she was in her 60s. And her finance plan is simple. Every Saturday evening, she put herself a glass of wine and sit in front of the TV and waited for her lotto number to be called on TV. And she always told me, I will buy your units. 
if I won a big lotto and I've never received that unit, and obviously she didn't really win big prize. They are the main money messages I got from my Chinese parents and Aussie mom. When I was studying at uni, I read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad and Poor Dad. And this book really opened my eyes to the world of wealth and investing. After I read a few of his books, I started investing. But that didn't really go well. I made a mistake and I lost most of my money. That was the main reason I got into this industry. Because I understand reading a few finance books is not enough to be a successful investor. And I understand most people like me don't grow up with a how to money manual. So it is my responsibility to empower and educate others with the knowledge and the skills I learned along the way. I don't even want others make the same mistake I did or my parents or other people did in the past. So before we go to any topic about how to calculate and how much money you need and how to get there, can I ask what financial freedom really means to you? Can you just type in your answer on the chat box? What financial freedom really means to you? Work-life balance and comfort retirement, financial freedom means to me choices. I like that one. Flexibility of lifestyle, yes. Doing what I love. Choices, comfort, yes. The ability to earn. The ability to make choices that are aligned with the life I want to live with, uh, without stress or having to miss out. Fun tickets, wow. <laughs> financial freedom means different things to different people. For me, financial freedom means having the flexibility to make the most out of our life without relying on a paycheck or traditional job. So in the normal cycle of wealth, people accumulate wealth until retirement, then start to consume what they have in retirement. Hopefully, the money will last and leave some legacy to the next generation. They are consumers in the economy. And in the life cycle of finance freedom, instead of getting by at retirement, you build an investment portfolio generating passive income, exceeding your expenses, and you continue to grow your wealth. So if you want to be financially free, you should be a stakeholder and investor in the economy instead of being consumer. Most people earn income from job or employment or business and spend money on living expenses, pay taxes, and repay the debts. Hopefully, they can pay off home and accumulate sufficient fund in the retirement. In the framework of finance freedom, you buy income producing assets instead of spend all money on the lifestyle. So income producing assets include mains fund, exchange traded fund, supernation, shares, and properties. When passive income from all these money making machine exceed your expenses, you will no longer rely on paying job or business and you will be financially free. Can I 
ask one thing. I know it's lots of people in this room is a business owner. And when do you need to think about and plan your exit strategy? You can just type in your answer on the chat box. When do you need to think about and plan your exit strategy? At the start, yes, yeah. As early as possible, yeah. When you start working, yeah. Planning now, yeah. Very good, yeah. Begin with the end in mind, yes, yeah. That's a good one. I completely agree. The ideal time is when you start your own business. So I saw lots of business owners working really hard during working life, but at the end of the day, they got really little left over. If you want to exit your business with two years and retire comfortably, Building a money-making machine should be included in your exit strategies. The steps to achieve financial freedom, okay. The first most, most important thing is saving money. So without savings, there is no investments. And without investments, there is no growth. So you must pay yourself first before you take care of other bills. Take care, pay yourself first strategy is very simple. So every payday, the money hit your transaction accounts, you transfer a percentage to investment accounts. You save and spend what is left. And building a money-making machine is next step. So, we can see lots of some people can make really good profits out of their investments, but some people are struggling and keep losing the money. So it is not just about luck; it's more about uh, you learn. You need to learn before you earn. So investment is a combination of art and science. So there is not lots of things, technical stuff, and skills you need to learn to be to be a successful investor. And also you need to learn how to manage risk in both good and bad markets to maximize investment returns and avoid permanent loss. I know some people in this room are business owners and uh, lots of business owners don't have supination or have very little balance in their supination based on my experience. So I would rather divide money-making machine into two categories. One is super nation, the other one is nine super investments. So Australian government give a huge tax advantage to contributing in super nation. So once you're over age 60, all the income stream from your super nation and investment returns will be tax-free. So for example, if you are getting $100,000, from your supination, after tax, it's going to be still $100,000 once you're over age 60, up to 1.9 million. But if you are getting $100,000 income from nine super investments, after tax, $100,000 will become $75,000. So $25,000 can make a huge difference in your retirement lifestyle. But if you're in your 20s and 30s and 40s, you can't really put all your money in your supination because you can't really access your supination before age 60. So you need to have both super, supination and nine super investments. So nine super investment includes men's funds, exchange traded funds, property, direct property, and property trust. So property trust is a property men's funds and shares and other investments such as savings. How much do you need to be financially free? 
In theory, you need at least 25 times of your annual living expenses to be financially free. So if you need $50,000 for annual expenses, $50,000 multiplied by 25 equals 1.25 million. And assuming your investment grows by 7% per year after inflation. So at least 7% comes from average return of 10% measured by the S&P 500. And you withdraw 4% of your investment premium. So 1.25 million, 4% equals $50,000. So withdrawing 4% is really a conservative approach because you are not going to get 7% investment returns every year because the investment market is volatile. The key is to never touch your investment principle and only withdraw less than your investment growth. So how do we calculate how much you need to achieve financial freedom? Then we are going to look into how long it takes to accumulate the amount you need for financial freedom. Normally I use a compound interest calculator on many smart websites. This is a really smart calculator and you can identify your end goals and also your saving goals with this calculator. And I use this all the time with my clients and also for my own finance. So if you contribute $2,500 per month for the next 20 years, assuming you are getting 7% returns out of inflation, out of 20 years, you can accumulate approximately 1.3 million. And if you delay a couple of years, that's going to make a significant difference. So if you delay two years with the same investment amounts and compound returns, your investment will be less, almost $200,000. And if you delay five years with the same investment amounts and compound returns, your investments will be more than half a million less. So it highlights the power of compound interest and the importance of uh, taking action now. So this is just one example. And the uh, actual time you need to achieve your financial freedom is depending on how much uh, savings you can put in and your desired amount and also investment returns and your lifestyle expenses. And some of you might think I have to wait another 10 years or 20 years and 30 years to be financially free. But actually some people want to slow down in the next few years, but there is a solution, don't worry. So there is a semi-retirement concept can kick in in this kind of situation. So semi-retirement means you work less and enjoy life more and spend time with your family without waiting another decade before you can claim your freedom back. The strategy for family retirement is simple. So you stop saving once you accumulated half of your desired financial freedom nest egg and let it grow itself. So for example, if your financial freedom nest egg is 1.25 million, you stop saving when you reach your goal, $625,000 and let it grow itself. So if your nest egg grows by 7% per year, you will reach your financial freedom goal after around 10 years of semi-retirement. So your, once you stop your contribution in your nest egg, with 7% returns, your investment will grow to the, to the amount you desired in 10 years time without you contributing any amounts.
And some of you think I'm in my 50s or 60s and uh, I don't really have 10 years or 20 years, but I would like to have a comfortable retirement. So there's a solution for every problem. If you are in your 50s or 60s, you don't really need 25 times of your annual expenses to have a count retirement. So based on the standard of association of super fund of Australia, single person need $50,000 and the couple need $70,000 to have a count retirement every year. And to have a least level of income, you need to save $595,000 for a single person and $690,000 for a couple. Because you are going to get ACE pension. Don't forget about ACE pension. So you are going to get a combination of ACE pension plus income stream from your retirement savings. The path to finance freedom is not really a smooth journey. I understand that. So in this topic, I'd like to discuss up three, three key things. One is inner game of money. So we call it as a money blueprint. You might wonder why some people with more decent income can build wealth more easily and quickly than others with a high paid job, constantly struggle with money. It is because of money blueprints. Money blueprint is the way we are programmed around money. And I will explain this later, more in detail. And system and strategies, you need to understand the two actual tools. So what kind of strategies and product you can use to achieve finance freedom. And I also will give you the solutions at the end of the presentation. And the most importantly, taking action. So knowledge is power. But uh, it is just a potential power. Execution is real power. Educating kids about money, okay. Actually, Lynn particularly asked me to discover this topic. So first of all, you need to help your kids build a positive money blueprints. So as I said before, money blueprint is the way we are programmed around the money. And we are programmed in the three ways around the money. The things we heard, the things we saw, the events we experienced when we were young. Because subject of money is not taught at school, it is taught at home. And our money blueprint is formed mainly in our childhood. So when I look at the my parents' finance and reflecting the composition and the behaviors way around the money. My dad was one of the top, top experts in his field and uh, he was on TV all the time. But my mom always complained we didn't have enough money. So I was really confused and uh, this left me the belief money never enough. After I moved to Australia as an international student, I had a really limited budget. And that further confirmed my inner voice, money is never enough. So when I was an investor at the beginning of my journey, I was really struggling. And also even I started as an, as an advisor for a couple of years, nothing left over. I spent all the money I made. Until one day I discovered a book that really changed my perspective. And I would like to share this book with you at the end of the presentation. And then of course you can teach your kids about compound interest, uh, compound power of the compound interest. So you can show to your kids, if they start saving now, how much they are going to end up after 20 years and 30 years and 40 years with a compound interest calculator. So if you want to arrive at your destination early, you need to start early and set a good example. So we are very much modeling my, our parents' behaviors around the money. So if you're a spender, 80 or 90% chance, your kids will be spender too. And also you need to help them form risk habits. How you can form risk habits, 
I will recommend a book at the end of presentation. How to change your money blueprints? I'd like to share my experience and how I changed my, my money blueprints. So I had a really poor mindset and my mind focused on scarcity, not abundance. So that was at the beginning of my journey, I really struggled with money. So I give myself a positive statement every day. So your statement cannot conflict what you truly believe. For example, you cannot be a millionaire by saying I'm a millionaire and wealthy all the time, hundreds of times in a day when you are broke. Because your conscious mind knows it is not true. Your subconscious mind only believe your dominant thoughts and what you believe to be true. And also you can create a vision board. You cut out and paste the pictures of your dream house, dream car, dream holiday destinations and your ideal balance of investment portfolio to vision board and key place uh, where you can see every morning and every night before going to bed. And it reminds you what you want in your life and working with a financial advisor. Financial advisor, good financial advisor can help you identify your goals and dreams and aspirations and turn these goals and dreams into numbers and apply strategies and motivate you to take actions and keep you on track and accountable. And during the process of repeating right actions, your money blueprint will be improved. And most importantly, you need to take action. Start contributing in your Nation. Build your emergency fund. Talk to someone who understands money. And start building a money making machine. Other things you can you can you can take immediate action after this webinar. There are three books I can recommend here. The first one is Secret of Millionaire Mind by T. Habiker. So this book really trains my money blueprints and shift my paradigm around the money. And the other one is a uh, Rich Habits and Poor Habits by Tom Corey and Michael Yatney. So Michael Yatney is a very successful property investor and educator in Australia, and Tom Corey is an uh, experienced accountant. And the one in the middle is my book, and uh, after we have now, I will, I will email you a copy of my ebook. So Your Best Life is the book show you how to apply meanings to the money and how to build your wealth and achieve finance freedom with the guidance of old advisor. So this book show all the concept framework and the strategies of finance, finance planning by telling stories. So it's very easy to read. So I actually told the story, told my client's story, the young couple's story and their parents and their grandparents and their extended family stories very easy to read and very easy to follow. But all these things, just the toolbox, so the mindsets and habits and basic strategies of hands planning are toolbox. We need an actual tool to implement and execute. So I have a new online course coming up in the next two, three months. And uh, there are six models in this online course. The first model is master the art of investing and achieve finance freedom. And in this, uh, in this uh, online course, I'm going to teach you how to save money without compromising much on your need and also how to build money making machine, how to do research, assess risk and returns and uh, how to choose right investment options for yourself. So everyone is different. So one size doesn't fit all. And also this online course can teach you how to manage risk, to maximize returns in volatile markets and prevent permanent loss. I don't even make a same mistake I did or my clients did in the past happen to you. 
and how is this uh, this course also explained how to borrow to invest and how to save tax from investments. So it is all from me today, and uh, there are some contact details uh, for my business. And uh, if you need, have any questions, you can contact me anytime. Thank you so much for your time today. And uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, so thank you so much, Helen. Um, it's such a simple concept. And the thing that I have noticed in the time that I've been working so closely with business women around Australia um, in this time since we first started Business Women Australia in 2015, 2016, is that women think it's a lot more complicated than it is. Uh, it's actually a very simple, it's a very simple concept. And I think when they realise how simple it is and spend some time with people like you, Helen, that they actually kick themselves for not getting stuck into it earlier. So for those of you I know in this call who uh, have an advantage over me in your use, um, you know, really don't put this off. Take this opportunity, jump in with Helen and go on that journey. Helen, what are, you, what are your thoughts um, about the, the um, share market game? Something I did in my 20s, which I think was quite, uh, uh, and in fact, even at school, we had it. Um, we had a, a team and I learned very the hard way at school. I lost a lot of money um, by being high risk investor. You can imagine I, I'm naturally high risk. Um, and I learned early in my life, you know, as a, as a teenager that my decisions in the stock market around high risk weren't paying off. So when I was at, um, when I graduated from uni, I graduated with a commerce degree, but didn't know anything about shares. So I did this, what they had was they had some uh, public open education courses for very minimal costs. So my girlfriends and I, I dragged them along and um, with the view that I would buy them a wine at the end of the evening. Um, and it was a good way to catch up. I dragged them to this share market course, but the ASX actually does have a share market game that's opening up. Um, for those of you who are thinking of doing Helen's course, it might be a good time to register for that. It's a free game, Helen. Do you think that's a good, that you get $50,000 from the you know, virtual money? Um, and I think registrations are open. They close on the 12th of October, that to trading, it's for the trading period, August the 10th to November the 23rd. And with those, you know, $50,000 of virtual money, you can see how it goes, but you'll be able to use that time that perhaps you're using your, your learning with Helen. When does your course start, Helen? I'm thinking about in the next two or three months. So I yeah, need to- Good timing. Yeah. yeah. If it starts in the next two to three months in, in line with this, then, you know, you could be, having a play with the $50,000 that you get allotted um, and seeing, you know, what the differences are between the managed funds and the exchange traded funds and then the, you know, the high risk, the low risk, the blue chip, the whatever, you know, and be able to have that accountability with Helen and be able to have someone to ask questions about. I'll just stick in the chat box that, um, oh, hang on, that's the money start one. I'll, I'll find the the um, share market game and share it with you. But I will open up to questions. Um, who's got some questions of Helen now? Yeah, I can see here. And I'm curious about the income producing assets and system then strategies. I have tried individual shares, a uh, Vanguard ETF account and currently have a small lump in crypto. Okay, that's exciting. And uh, I want to to do it okay so before you choose your investment options you need to understand the risk involved so like a cryptocurrencies it doesn't really have a uh, intrinsic value so it is really high risk investments and very volatile and like a vanguard etf is really diversified portfolio and uh, with this kind of investment investments i think uh, Making a regular contribution can be really good strategies. We call them as a, a dollar cost averaging. And uh, because you contribute every month, every week, or 
every fortnightly. And at the end of the day, you can get the average returns. So if market is down, you can buy more units. If market is up, you can buy less units. It's really diversified portfolio and it's a safe way to build wealth. So it depends what stage you are at. So if we are young and single, of course, you can take lots of risk. But uh, even, the, even the same age, young people got uh, families and mortgage, they got obligations, they can't be too much risk. And if you are close to retirement age, of course, you need to really careful where you invest your money in. Because at that time, you need to focus on protecting and preserving your wealth instead of taking too much risk in the share markets. Uh, Helen, can I get you to stop sharing your screen so we can see everyone's faces too? Okay, sure, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? So I, I've got a question. Um, yes. You know, I've been looking at, um, obviously, I've, I've got a bit of an interesting portfolio. Um, over the years, you know, I made the mistake of selling some of my very good blue chip shares a bit too early um, in order to fund some travel, uh, regretting that. That's, as I'm sure every, everyone who's had shares has some regrets, just like we have regrets about the property that we didn't buy. Um, I, have, I find it interesting, um, I'm uh, married to Simon, most of you know that, and he has a very different risk appetite to mine. Uh, he grew up, his money story is um, very affected by his parents who really saved, they were high income earners, his dad was a dentist, and um, but his father only ever bought things for cash. And it, so debt is, he, Simon's always had an issue with debt. I mean, over the years, he's learned to live with me because I love investing in property and shares and I like using good debt um, to my advantage. But, you know, have, I'd love to hear people's thoughts around their experiences if they've been with people in relationships where you're having to make joint decisions or do we, is it better to separate it out and you have my money, your money, that sort of stuff, you know, if anyone got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I got some clients, uh, couple and the uh, wife normally conservative and the husband is more aggressive portfolio and it's the opposite to your situation. <laughs> and normally we set the common goals. So what uh, they try to achieve. And when I give advice for your portfolio and I can give advice based on their individual risk profile. So if a husband is more conservative, I can let him invest. It'll be more conservative portfolio. And if wife is more aggressive, I can, I can let, her, let her invest in more aggressive portfolio. But they are all normally it's diversified portfolio. We don't really encourage them by cryptocurrencies or by individual shares because it doesn't matter cryptocurrencies and individual shares. It also, of course, it depends on their uh, age and risk appetites. So cryptocurrencies and individual shares got higher risk. So if you can bear, lose them all, then of course you can invest, but lots of people don't really have that kind of high risk profile. Yeah, well, mine's not that high, but <laughs> it's just like really low. I mean, I, even in the property space, I, drove, I saw this amazing property just recently. They'd be so easy to retain and do up the old house, carve off, sell off the the back part there's money to be made in it it's like nah he's like oh look not at this age he's like this is not our time to be doing that sort of thing you know we're mid 50s now Lynn we should be just bedding things down and not risking anything and not tying up any more debt oh it's like okay you know it is what it is right yeah, and also risk profile is important, but the other thing is also how much money you contribute in your supernation and do cash flow management and how much money you contribute in your supernation or non super investments. Yeah. I'm, yeah, regular contribution. That's yeah. his point. We should be just putting as much as we can into super rather than developing things. And I, I mentioned about the dollar cost averaging. So because market is volatile all the time, we can't predict we can't predict what is going to happen tomorrow. So we don't, no one, no one got crystal ball. So you make regular contributions every week or every fortnight or every month. So then at the end of the day, you can 
get average returns or more than average? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, the, the other side of it too is the legacy you want to leave behind potentially for, you know, we've got four children yep. and, you know, we could be buying things in the family trust that they could then manage, you know, as a part of an ongoing kind of longer term strategy. You know, our I feel like in some regards, you know, you can get your short term, your, your own strategy ready and then you can start building a longer term legacy. Yeah, let's uh, let, uh, come down to the estate planning. So how much money you would like to leave to your kids and uh, also how much money you would like to spend. So when we do the protections for our clients and I would normally encourage them to uh, build a sufficient uh, nest egg uh, until they retire. So like well, you can use uh, let like compound interest calculator and uh, how much money you put aside now every month and how much money you can end up in the next uh, five years, 10 years or 20 years. You can calculate yourself and uh, ask yourself, is it going to be sufficient? Yeah. So you, don't, you may not have an answer because we don't even know how long we are going to live in retirement. But some people can be just 10 years, some people can be 30 or 40 years. Long yeah, long um, yeah, looking at my mother, you know, she lived until she was 98. So yes, yeah. I'm planning to live to 100, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> You're not getting oh, beyond, beyond 100, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Okay, any, uh, okay, so we've got a few um, few comments uh, that have come up. A um, uh, few people have married to the same person as I have. <laughs> that's, that's actually hilarious. Um, uh, good on you, Ari. Are there, are there Vanguard accounts or similar that allow you to invest at as little as $25 a week? Helen, are you aware of any that... Um... Okay, so $25 a week? I About this, this number, I have no idea. But uh, you can start really small amount with the Vanguard accounts. So Vanguard account, there are two different kinds of options. One is index fund, the other one is ETF. So the difference is they are very much, uh, they hold very much similar holdings in the investments. But uh, ETF, you need to pay blockage fees every every time you put the money in. And index fund, you don't really need to pay blockage. So you can either buy Vanguard ETF on the trading accounts and uh, or you can just uh, buy them directly from the Vanguard. But the $25, I'm not sure about this number yet. So Alicia, have you got, have you seen something, you know, in your research? What have you seen? Um, I can't remember how much I was buying in the Vanguard because it was a couple of years ago. Um, but I know that I basically pulled it out of the Vanguard and then I popped it into the crypto because um, during 2020, um, when we all well you know when uh COVID started happening I started thinking oh my gosh I need to invest and um I could only afford 20 actually 20 dollars a week back then and I was able to do it with crypto and nothing else so that's what I did and I just spent 20 dollars a week and then eventually 25 dollars a week and then at some point it was up to 50 dollars a week and I haven't saved anything for a little while now but that was kind of handy for me. And I'm, I think I've got like a hundred percent gain at this point, but I also know that could change whenever. So I just don't really look at it and it's a long-term thing, you know, but um, I would like to like, just let that sit there and then start building something else like another ETF account. And is it possible to do it with like small amounts of money like I did with the crypto? ETF account you can do with small amounts, I guess. Like yeah. A, yeah, I think on your on your on your trading account, I guess twenty five dollars per week can be possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, yeah, if uh, you do twenty five dollars a week, it's going to be more than one hundred bucks per month. It's a it's really safe way. It's a ETF is a safer than cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. So most of them are shares or property trust. So they, they got a real value. Shares uh, represent ownership of the companies and uh, property has got real value, but cryptocurrency doesn't really, normally doesn't really have a intrinsic value. So that's why it's, and that's why it's really high volatile investments. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand 
if you can afford to lose the more, of course, you can put in cryptocurrencies, but uh, the risk is less high. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we've got uh, Kylie here's asked about super self managed super funds. What's a okay. good point to consider options? And um, is it good to be looking at buying property uh, within a self managed super fund? Okay, so SMSF uh, is a uh, it's very tricky investments, supination. Okay, so I'm specialized in SMSA, but it's not really for everyone. So AC recommended if your balance is under half million, you shouldn't have SMSA because it's not really cost effective. It's, but it's, it is not regulated yet, but it is their recommendation. And self managed super fund, you can buy lots of different things. So you can buy properties, cryptocurrencies, and collectibles, and all different things. But uh, to compare comparing to traditional super fund, like an uh, industrial super fund, your investment op options are quite limited. It means you've got more flexibility to buy, buy different things. But also, you need to understand. You need to, you need to be you need to have that sophisticated level to understand what investment you want to buy and ask yourself, do you have expertise and skills to manage the investment yourself and also meet trusted obligations? And also how much money you got in your supernation. If you only got the $50,000 or $100,000, I'm not going to recommend. And buying a property, we got really good investment returns in the property market in the last uh, few years since pandemic. But it doesn't really happen every year. It's only happened once in 20 years or 30 years. And uh, property really can give you really good income and returns, kept both uh, capital, capital growth and mm -hmm. rental income. But uh, lots of people failed from property investments because literally, have that kind of expertise and skills to identify right properties. Because it's not something you can get plenty of experience. So for normal people, they only buy one or two properties in their lifetime. Later, they are not really buy 10 or 20, prop 10 or 20 properties and until the, for them to get enough experience in the market. So that's why they some, some people want to invest in property markets and uh, I got quite a few clients invest in, but uh, they didn't really get much out of the property investing. So that is the main reason. So you need to learn before you can earn. So for, for people that are interested in property, you know, the concept of uh, property fund, you know, funds that have property assets in them, with, you know, that are managed by people with uh, who are buying and selling properties and developing properties, commercial and all sorts of things is something that I'd never really thought about until I started getting involved with um, Private Wealth Network, actually, and realising that this is a whole nother asset class that I didn't really know about. Helen, what are your thoughts about that? Okay, probably trust. So we call them as a property mains funds. So they normally invest in commercial properties. Yeah. So it's like, like, a, like a share mains fund. It's exactly the same thing. But uh, comparing to buying a direct property and property trust, Property trust is diversified, more diversified, and buying a direct property, you just buy one property and put all your eggs in one basket. And the other thing is too, some of those um, some of those funds are private, depending on if, if you're a sophisticated investor, but some of them are also listed on the stock market, so you can buy smaller parts of them. Yep. So that's another thing in doing your research, uh, ladies, is really yes. looking at, you know, who are the people that spend all their time, all day, every day, analyzing and managing and learning about the risk? If you've got a passion for an area, you can actually tap into their expertise around that as well, rather than, you know, like I like to do, which is see something that's almost like a piece of creative outcome. You know, here's an old property, I've done it up, I've sold a bit, I've made a bit. Maybe with all that time and effort and money, I could have made a lot more by just parking it and letting it compound. You know, this is, I think the message that I'm getting here from Helen is that there's probably a lot easier ways of making money uh, and making the money work for you while yeah, you're doing simple. what you're doing. Yeah, there's a, there's a simple way, much more, uh, you know, it's a simple way to make money. Yeah. It's not really 
Investing is not that complex if you understand basic rules and if you know how to do the research. It's not that complex, and uh, it's also depend on how, how much uh, risk you want to take. Yeah, so you don't really want to take take much risk and want to get uh, average returns eight percent or nine percent over the next ten years. Let's let's not let hard. You need to understand just simple few rules. Uh, Kylie, did that answer your question? Was there anything more you wanted to ask about? Yep, you're all good. Um, and Annie Muscles just said, what percentage would you recommend for each asset across, say, ETFs, shares, super, savings? Have you got any thoughts about the allocation across the board? Are there any rules of thumb? Okay, so it all, it's also depends for the savings. So I'd rather to say at least the three to six months the living cost. So if you have a kids and young family, at least six months living cost. And if you're a single person, don't really have a much family obligation, three months can be sufficient. It all depends. It depends on your job security. And for the properties and the shares and uh, how much portion you would like to invest, I like uh, invest in diversified portfolio. So you can invest, like what you just mentioned, property trust. So you can invest 30% uh, in the property trust or 20% in the Australian shares and another 20% in the international shares. Don't just put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, I've just, just worked that out. <laughs> I've just moved mine across to look at what, you know, what's going to potentially do well and and move it into those different um, three different asset classes, even even inside my super. I've never really looked at my super, and then I was like, actually, you know, I can make some influential decisions inside that super and and make that work for me. So these are some of the things, you know, that uh, all that super is getting sort of parked away. For those of you particularly on the, on salaries, um, you know, have a look at and talk to you know financial advisor about. The assets that you're actually putting it across does it does make a, dif a difference so um i think she has been choosing high risk for the last five years so can you talk a little bit about bonds please nina's interested in bonds and you know that bonds were never that sexy at a time you know when money was almost free and all of a sudden bonds are starting to become of more interest aren't they helen yeah, so now interest rate, rate is rising and the bond uh, portfolio can be more attractive for investors. And bond is a conservative investment. So it depends on, or of course, it depends on your risk profile. If you are a conservative investor and you are aiming for 5 or 6% returns, then you can invest in bond portfolio. But uh, if you are still accumulating your wealth, for the next 10 years or 20 years, if you put 1% in the bond portfolio, it's not really wise for you to achieve your goals. So when you, when my client, I got lots of clients in their 50s and 60s. I don't really have a young clients. So all my clients, most of my clients are in their 50s and 60s. And for them, preserving and protecting their retirement savings are important. So especially when they are really close to their retirement age, I put the, uh, their money in different buckets. So some put some money in the cash bucket, put some money in the bond buckets and put some money in the shares, properties and international shares. So when market crashed, share market crashed, share and the property market crashed. So they don't really need to withdraw money from let growth buckets. So they can withdraw money from cash buckets and land bond buckets. So let's uh, let their uh, let uh, shares and property 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 investments grow and let let because they will volatile, like a uh, property trust is very volatile. Sometimes it can be more volatile than shares. Mm -hmm. It's not really something safe or safe investments. It can be really volatile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you need to have that kind of cash cushion and bond portfolio. And yeah. when market crashed. You need to, if you, when you need money, you need to withdraw the money from that bucket, not the, uh, you know, it's a uh, shares and property, property, property investment buckets. So, I mean, in a lot of ways, 
um, now that business, now that the interest rates are going up, you know, just savings and getting an interest on savings accounts start to become quite a part of um, of the end, you know, the transition to retirement piece as well. I guess you know, as just as we start bringing out money from, um, you know, to be able to live and get such accessing money from super. Uh, but the thing, no, it's a, you can't put, uh, put, uh, put lots of money in the saving accounts because we need to look at the inflation, inflation rates and saving rates. Saving rates is not now is uh, much higher than before, but still couldn't really keep up with inflation. Okay. In Australia, it's inflation over 7%. Saving, maybe I don't really know, it's uh, 3%. So there's a classic money story in my head because mum put all, all her money in a high interest savings that then rolled over. So I can't just assume that that was a good idea. So you've just actually just blown that myth out of the water. I love that. What other money stories are out there that are floating around? So what are the, oh, Alicia wants to know, what's the third class in the simple laws? So what are the simple laws that are, that we really need to be thinking about? So obviously the compound interest um the 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 three month or six month savings that we might need depending on where we're at with our life okay simple as okay so diversification so i think this way can explain really well it's really easy to break one pen but uh, you can't really break 50 pens combined together it is diversification so that's why I don't really recommend the unsophisticated investor invest in one company share or one direct property for that reason, because it's a high risk. If you're a sophisticated investor, you've got plenty of investment experience. Of course, you can concentrate. But uh, someone who just uh, want to build their investment portfolio and who doesn't really want to spend hours and hours every, every, every week on researching investment options, I think diversification is uh, the way to go. It's one, diversification one thing. And the other thing is how to manage risk in the volatile markets. So when market is really good, at the top, we got the highest risk. People is happy and oh yeah, market is really good. I want to jump in and I want to buy and that's not the best time. That's the worst time. When market is really bad, everyone is selling their biggest opportunities. But a lot of investors don't really understand. That's it. That's it. And if it if it starts crashing, just ride the wave out until it starts bouncing back up again. I think we saw that in the last crash, didn't we? That those who sold out. Yeah, during the pandemic. They didn't get then this incredible growth that came following it. So it's a, investing is like a, doing the shopping. So when do you do your main shopping? When the boxing days. Yeah. yeah, but boxing days and the media sale, you would like to buy lots of things with discounts. Do the investing is the same thing. Buy the investments with a discounted price, not at the top of the markets. So Helen, uh, Antoinette's got a question. Helen, is your view of renting a home, but investing in a property to rent out gain income? So, uh, and Antoinette, do you want to explain that question? Yeah, sure, sorry, Lynn, I realize it could could sound a bit <laughs> Irish, um, which um, so so basically, Helen, if you if you're renting your if you've got an investment property you're renting out, but you choose to do that rather than live in it, and you're renting, you're paying rent yourself on your family home. What's your view about that? Apart from the obvious, what's your general view about that? Do you think that makes good economic sense? Because clearly, your investment property is going to appreciate. And you're getting constant rent out of it anyway. I just wondered what your view was on that sort of thing. Okay, so lots of people, at least there's lots of people do that. And also it depends on the situation. So how much rent you are getting from your investment property and how much rent you need to pay. 
And also depend on if you got a loan in your investment properties, at the end of the day, is it going to be positive or negative queuing? How, how, how it's going to affect your cash flow? So at the end of the day, we need to look at the one thing. You need to have positive cash flow from the strategies. You cannot have a negative cash flow to achieve finance freedom. So negative QLing was really popular years ago, but uh, when we really discovered the secrets of negative QLing, at the end of the day, if you want to achieve finance freedom, you need to have positive cash flow. If it's positive, that's good. If it's negative, okay, no, if it's negative, you need to look at. So at the end of the day, we expect your property value will increase over time. So five years, 10 years, we expect it's going to be double or more than double, but uh, that is not something you can control. What you can control now is your cash flow. Is it positive or negative? Is it uh, help you achieve your goals or hinder you from achieving your goals? Yes, so you know, Thanks, we're, we're, thank you. That's really interesting because we're in our mid fifties now, and you know we've had been negative gearing, you know, a couple of investment properties. Now we're starting to think let's actually reduce that income to a point where it will, uh, when we want to, you know, retire, whether that's ten years time or whatever, but that 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 will actually become a positively geared uh, property because the negative gearing won't be as valuable for us down the track and then that will actually then become an income producing asset for us yeah so you know that was never even a thought when we first invested in those properties it was all about utilizing that and getting them in capital growth areas where we'd potentially be able to make capital gain now we're starting to think maybe we'll never sell them because they're great income producing assets because rents have gone up so much we hadn't predicted that they would be such great rentals um, now I'm starting to think maybe we should just flog them and stick them into a <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> manage fund and forget it and go traveling. I don't know. It's so, you know, sometimes you have too many choices too. That's the other thing as well. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, people yeah, we can start with choice, Helen. Yeah, so we got a lot of a lot of options, and we can start from negative, but at the end of the day, you would, your investment need to be positive because negative gearing is not is not going to work if you want to achieve finance freedom or retire one day comfortably. Yeah. Uh, what other questions have we got there? Any more questions in the chat box? Uh, great conversation. Katrina, super interested in the course. That's good. She needs to go. We love Katrina. She's gone now. If anyone needs a cybersecurity guru, she does fantastic training as well. I just recommended her for some training for... Um, for another organization, she was awesome. Yeah, uh, so saving rates is around five percent, or it's really high. Okay, so I never really save, I save, save, save much money in the saving account. So I don't really looking looking at the saving rates. But uh, when you look at the inflation, it's now it's seven percent. Still couldn't really keep up with the inflation. So the money sitting in the saving accounts, the value of the money sitting in the saving account is uh, decreasing. So you can you can put an emergency fund in your saving accounts. You can't really put emergency fund in the cryptocurrencies or share account. Never do that. So all those gross assets are long term investments. So you, but the emergency fund for three months or six months living costs you can put in the saving accounts. But it doesn't really give you the let growth for to achieve your goals eventually. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I think uh, we've come to the end of the questions. I'm going to stop recording, but I'd be very happy for everyone to stay on. Um, if they've got any questions uh, of um, Helen that they would like to have off the recording or 